we have a couple of scriptures that will be in John, because John is such a great book, right? Yeah, it is a good book. I am excited that you are here and you're going to be joining us on this adventure of experiencing God this summer. This is, I think, going to be a great, a great time of learning, and I think we're going to do a lot of growing. Let me aim this at Jolene a little bit. Thanks so much. <laughs> it's going to be a great time to learn to experience God this summer. And I hope that uh, you are as excited about it as I am. Will you pray with me and we will get started. Father God, again, I just ask your blessing on this time that we have together, Lord. And uh, as we go through uh, your message this morning, I just pray that you will move our hearts and our lives. And uh, I just pray that we can be as excited about following you as you are about us coming to you, Lord. Father, we love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Have you ever found yourself asking this question? God, what is your will for my life? Have you ever asked yourself that? I've asked myself that a lot, quite honestly, in, in my life. God, what is your will for my life? And how do I know it and how do I get there? And I think that, um, I think that when we talk about God's will, sometimes we think of it as something that is just way far out there that we're stretching for. Like, it's out here, and that's where I want to be. That's where I'm trying to get to. Um, and it seems like this elusive thing that, oh, I want to know what God's will is, and I have such a hard time knowing it. Well, that's what we're going to be talking about over the next eight weeks over the summer is how to experience God and how to know and do God's will. But I want you to understand this. If you are ready to do this, you have to be able to ask and answer this question. Are you ready to do God's will? When God reveals his will to you, are you ready to say, yes, God, I am here, I will do it? That's the first thing we have to come to terms with. Like, <clears throat> way back in my previous life, <laughs> when God was calling me into ministry, honestly, I argued with God for almost six months, maybe even more, because I couldn't say, here I am, send me. I couldn't say that. I was afraid where God was going to want me to go. I didn't want to go to Cambodia or something like that. I've never been out of the country. I've barely been out of the Pacific Northwest because that's God's country. But <clears throat> that's beside the point. I was afraid where God was going to send me, and I could not say, God, here I am, send me. And as I argued with God for like six months, there was this song that came on the radio. Guess what the song was called? Here I am, send me. Every time I got in the car to go to work, every time I got in the car to come home, Every time I got in the car to go to church, this stupid song would come on the radio. It's not stupid. It's a really good song. If you <laughs> Google it, it's a really good song. You should listen to it. But this song would come on the radio. Here I am, send me. And I'm going, God, I can't say that. I'm not going to say that. And then finally, after arguing with God and coming up with all of these excuses, um, one of the excuses was, I have a family now. I have to take care of my family. I can't go somewhere like that. And God told me, I'll take care of your family. I'll take care of you. Just say the words. So finally I said, okay, God, here I am, send me. And guess what happened? I'm in Prineville. I'm in the Pacific Northwest. I'm in Prineville, God's country. And uh, uh, we're here and we're reaching out into the community. And that is where God wants me. I believe that was his will. That's where he wants me to be. And so when we are going through this, I want you to understand to be in God's will, you're going to have to be able to say, okay, God, here I am. What do you want me to do? So you have to be prepared to say that. So kind of start working in your mind and working in your heart that that's one of the important steps right there. And we're going to talk about some foundational steps today that it, it kind of lays the groundwork for the next the following seven weeks, all right? So if you have your study notes, 
<coughs> go ahead and take those out. We're going to be going through some, some things here. And right off the bat, we need to talk about our memory verse. So our memory verse this week, it's in your program under what's happening, because there's a, that's what's happening is your memory verse right now. Your memory verse today, and if you, have it, if you have it in front of you, let's go ahead and read it together. If not, you can listen and, and memorize it later. Um, believe it or not, it's in John. John 15, 5. It says, I, yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. Those apart from me can do nothing. And that brings us to the very first thing, the foundation, one of the foundational things that we need to understand is to follow the will of God, you have to pursue a relationship instead of a religion. A relationship instead of a religion. And I, I have talked about this many, many times in the past, a relationship. It's all about a relationship with Jesus. It's all about a relationship with each other, but most importantly, to understand God's will for your life, for, to understand God's will, you have to have a relationship with Jesus. You have to know who Jesus is. Just like our memory verse said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me have that relationship, and I in them will produce much fruit. But what does the last sentence say? For apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from me, you cannot know what the will of God is because we don't have that relationship. <clears throat> um, in, in the New Testament, there was a young man that came to Jesus, and he asked a very profound question. And it's probably one of the most important questions that this young man could have asked. And I kind of wonder if he realized how important his question was when he was talking to Jesus. He came to Jesus and he says, Jesus, what is the one thing, the one thing that I can do to make sure that I am following you, to make sure that I am in your will, in your teaching? The one principle that I can have in my life that I can follow and everything filters through. And you know what Jesus said? Look at Matthew 22, 37 through 38. Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. Love the Lord your God is the most important thing. Love him with all your being. And when we talk about this, and I want you to understand this, the difference between a religion and a relationship, a religion is following a whole bunch of rules, right? How many times have you heard people say, this is my rule book? Have you heard that before? It's just a bunch, you have to follow so many rules. That's not the point of Christianity. The point of Christianity is that we know Jesus. We have a relationship with Jesus, the Son of God, right? The whole New Testament is about Jesus coming to us. Because why? Because he loves us. Another scripture from John. God so loved the world that what? He gave his only son that whoever loves, believes in him, will not perish but have eternal life. He loves us. He wants to have that relationship with us. It's not about following rules. It's not about following a rule each and every day of your life. When we come to Jesus, we have that relationship with Jesus, and we know Jesus. We have a desire to follow Jesus. Amen? We have that desire to know how Jesus wants us to live, and we follow that. And as we follow that way that Jesus wants us to live, and we have this relationship with Jesus, God is going to reveal his will in our lives, and it's going to be a beautiful thing. It's going to be an exciting thing. And it's not just the New Testament that is telling us about this relationship, right? You look back at the Old Testament and look at Hosea 6.6. 6. I want to show you love. I want you to show love, not, not offer sacrifices. I want to, to... Let me read it down here. I can't read that back there. 
I want you to show love, not offer sacrifices. I want you to know me more than I want burnt offerings. God wants us to know him. He wants us to have this relationship with him. He wants us to have this intimate relationship with him that he's inside of us. He lives in us. The Holy Spirit is in us. Amen? And that is the relationship that we're talking about, have, accepting Jesus, following Jesus, being baptized into Jesus to, to be, become one with Jesus. The Holy Spirit is in us. He lives in us, and he wants, us to, he wants to help us. The idea of Christianity is not rules. It's about having that relationship with God. Let me ask you this question. If you were out in the wilderness, miles and miles and miles from nowhere, what is better? To have a map or to have someone that knows the way? Yeah, so we often look at God's will as, God, just give me a road map to know what I'm supposed to do with my life. Just tell me, okay, this is what I want you to do. This is how I want you to do it. That's not the way God's will works. God's will is about a relationship. And if you're stuck in the wilderness with just a map, how much harder is it to get out and get back to safety than being with someone that knows the way, that knows the hills like the back of his hand? That's what it's all about. Jesus is with us. We don't have a roadmap because Jesus is with us and he is showing us how to see God's will. He is guiding us each and every step of the way. That's the relationship. And while we are talking about that and we are trying to find God's will for our lives, we have to ask the right questions. So in your, in your study notes, this is the next fill in the blank. Ask the right questions or the, ask the right question, all right? So, is there a wrong question? All right. It can be so frustrating because as we are asking the wrong questions and we are looking in the wrong places for God's will, it can be confusing and it can be, it can be just frustrating. And, <coughs> excuse me. And as we are looking for God's will, <clears throat> oftentimes we look to the wrong sources. And as I go through this, you might think to yourself, yeah, I, I've done that. So I don't have these on the screen, so on the back of your, your study notes, you might write these down, all right? Um, some of the unreliable voices and sources that we have for following God's will that we need to be careful of, all right? And the first one, my own wisdom. My own wisdom. I know that, well, I would bet that guys are worse at this than other others because we can do it ourselves, right? We're guys. We can do it ourselves. Ladies, I don't know about you, I'm, but I want to fix it myself. So when we are trying to find God's will, oftentimes we think, I can do this. I know how to do this. I'm going to do this myself. That's the wrong attitude right there. That's, that's, um, that's not the right source or the right voice to be listening to. And the second thing is, is listening to other people. Now, let me, let me explain this a little bit before you go, what? Listening to other people. Listening to other people can be good because you can bounce ideas off of them and you can talk about things and your relationship with God and things like that. But get this, if you solely base your life and following God's will on what that other person says, who becomes God? You're putting that person in God's shoes, and they become God and not God. So it's important to be careful when you were talking to others, if that's the only time that you talk about God's will and trying to follow God's will is listening to other people, you need to really examine the questions that you're asking. Because there's only one person that can show you God's will, amen? And that's that relationship with Jesus. So, um, number three, unreliable sources, is letting open doors and favorable circumstances dictate your life. Now, I know, wait, but hear me out. I know that a lot of times when people are talking, well, God opened this door, and that's, I know it's God because that's what God opened the door for. I believe God opens doors, and I believe God has favorable circumstances for us to follow. But get this, 
Does Satan open doors? Does Satan put things in front of us that look favorable to us? Yeah. And should we be listening to Satan about where God's will is? That would probably be a bad idea because he does not want us to be in the center of God's will. He wants us to be totally outside and following something else. So when we talk about open doors and favorable circumstances, yes, they can lead to God's will, but we have to be careful because Satan can lay that in front of us and get us totally outside of where God wants us to be, right? <clears throat> Sometimes a closed door might be God's will for your life, right? God wants you to knock that door down so that you're square in the middle of his will. Sometimes that closed door that you have to fight for may be God growing you to do something exciting and special for God, right? And number four is other spiritual sources, all right? Other spiritual sources. Have you ever heard of someone, I don't know if you have, reading their horoscope and following that? Yeah, horoscopes can be something that can lead you way off track. Or how about palm readings, telling the future? Yeah, those are some things that will lead you off track. Or how about the newest spiritual book on Amazon that tells you, just put it out there into the universe and it will all come to you. Yeah, those are not reliable sources, so understand that. Or maybe um, a TV preacher that's not teaching biblically sound doctrine on TV. Or Scientology, yeah. So those are some sources and voices that we shouldn't be listening to. Whose voice should we be listening to? We listen to God. We listen to that relationship that God wants us to have to guide us through life. And in James chapter 1, he tells us, if you need wisdom, which we all do, amen? If you need wisdom, ask God, our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. So where do we get our wisdom? What voices do we listen to? We listen to God. We ask God for that wisdom. And we ask God to show us, God, where is your will? And we need to be asking the right question. All right? So uh, first, I want to give you the wrong question. All right? Are you ready for this? This is the wrong question to be asking to be in God's will. The wrong question. God, what is your will for my life? Have you ever said that? Have you said that? Who is at the center of this question? Me. Who should be at the center of the question? God. Yeah, so when we start focusing on, okay, what is your will for my life? We, we have these blinders on, and we don't see what's happening around us. So here's the right question. God has a much bigger plan for our lives than just, what is your will for my life? Here's the right question. God, what is your will? What is your will? Period. No more discussion. God, what is your will? And that takes us out of the center. That puts God into the center, right? We are not the center of the universe, though some people think we might be, but we are not right? God, he should be our focus. He should be the center of our lives. He is the center of the universe because he is the creator. Amen. Maybe he's on the right or the left of the universe. I don't know, but he is the center. And just like um, this guy that we're going to talk about next week in the Old Testament, his name was Moses. <clears throat> his plan was not to be working with God and joining God in getting his, the people out of Egypt, right? His plan was to be a shepherd, but God showed him what God's will was, and Moses joined him in God's plan. God had a much bigger plan for Moses than just being a shepherd. He became a shepherd, right, of millions of people, but his, God's plan was something bigger, something greater than what Moses could ask. God, what is your plan for my life and putting up blinders and looking for just my life. When we start talking about, God, what is your will? We open it up and we can see 
what God is doing. All right? Um, the next scripture I want to share with you is Isaiah 55, 8 through 9. <clears throat> and it kind of explains this idea of God having this greater plan, right? So it says, My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are nothing far beyond what you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. God has a much bigger idea of what is going to happen than we can even imagine. God has a much better plan for our life than we can ever dream of. Our dreams are nothing compared to God's dreams, amen? His ways are higher. His ways are better. His ways are wider. His ways are perfect. And we cannot put ourselves in God's place to say, okay, this is what I am going to do. This is what God wants me to do. This is the will of God right here without knowing Jesus and understanding what God has prepared for us. So the next, the next foundational thing that we need to understand as we are going through this Experiencing God series is we need to recognize where God is working around me. Recognize where God is at work around me. <clears throat> and when we start broadening our vision, all right, when we broaden our vision and we take away this, God, what is your will for my life? And we ask the right question, God, what is your will? And we open our eyes and we, need, we start recognizing God is at work. God is at work around me, right? He's, he's doing things, and I'm beginning to recognize these things. All right, look at this scripture with me. Imagine it's from John. <laughs> and Jesus replied, my father is always working, and so am I. What does that mean? All the time. God is always working. He is always at work around us. He is always at work in us. And he's always doing things around us, and he wants to invite us to join him. And he says, yes, I tell you the truth. The son can do nothing by himself. He does only the things that he sees the father doing. Whatever the father does, the son also does. The father loves the son and shows him everything he is doing. In fact, the father will show him how to do even greater works than healing the man that was right with him. All right? God is always working. He is always working in us, and he is always working around us. Remember we were talking about God works in us and through us? That's kind of the same concept that we're talking about trying to find God's will. When we recognize what God is doing around us, we can recognize his invitation to join him in his will. When we recognize what God is doing around us, we can recognize what God wants us to be doing and how to be in God's will and know what God's will is. All right? I think one of the biggest fears of a lot of people is what if I go and I do the wrong job? What if I go and I move to the wrong city? What if I go and I marry the wrong person? What if I do something wrong and I find myself outside of God's will? Have you ever thought about that? I thought about that a lot. But you know what? God's will doesn't work like that. God's will is not about following this road map. Like if, if we had a road map, we could say, yes, this is the job I'm supposed to have. Or this is the place I need to live. This is the person I'm going to marry. It doesn't work like that. It's not a road map. Being in God's will is about what? A relationship with God. Having that relationship and having Him with you and having this idea of God is with me and helping guide me into His will. And we are looking at the circumstances around us and see where God is working. And that is how we know where God's will is at. So when we have that relationship and we are listening to the Holy Spirit, are we going to be outside of God's will? No, we're not because we have that relationship. 
Every day, he's inviting you to join him on new adventures and possibilities. Every day, he is working. And when we begin to open our eyes and broaden our vision of God's will, we see his invitation and where he wants us to be. And as we go through this series of experiencing God, I am so excited about this. I hope that you will be able to join us for all, all eight weeks of this series, whether it's here in person or online. I hope that you are here because this is going to be such an exciting and powerful series, experiencing God. And I want to show you um, this little picture or graphic that kind of explains what we're going to be talking about. All right. So you have this graphic. And today we're just kind of introducing this idea of experiencing God. Next week, we're going to look at, it's just going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Next week, we're going to talk about God, God's work and where we can, how we can see what God is doing. All right. And we'll be referring back to this graphic on and off throughout the series. God wants us to join him. All right. He wants us He wants us to be right there with him as he is working. And in Amos 3, 7, he says, Indeed, the sovereign Lord never does anything without revealing his plans to his servants. He wants us to be with him. He wants us to join him. And he's going to reveal that to us through being able to recognize what God is doing and joining him in that invitation. And we're we're going to go through that. The last, the fourth foundational truth in your notes this morning is is this, and we've touched on it a little bit, all right, is we need to adjust our will, our life, to God's will. We need to adjust our life to God's will, right? How many times have you seen this? I want to do God's will. I want to know what God's will is for my life. I want to move to Phoenix. I don't really, but just understand this. I don't know. Never mind. (laughs) (laughs) For sake of argument, say, I want to move to Phoenix. And I say, God, what is your will for my life? What do you want me to do? And I am not listening and I am not watching what God is doing around the whole situation. And I move to Phoenix because that's what I want to do, right? But sometimes I have to adjust my life to God's will. When we are listening and we are paying attention to what God is doing and we are um, joining Him in His will, sometimes... It's not what we want. It's what God wants to be in His will. Amen? And some of the scariest things, and I think a lot of times Christians have this happen to them, is they pray and they pray and they pray. They want to be in God's will. And when it comes right down to it, oftentimes God's will requires change. Oftentimes, God's will requires change in our lives. And that change can be scary, right? That change can take us out of this comfort zone that we are comfortable with. We are happy in where we are in our life. And when we start opening our eyes to what God is doing, and we start seeing this invitation that God is giving us to join Him, it requires change. It requires us to adjust our lives to God's will. And that can be scary, right? And I think that's where things trip up for a lot of people when they're saying, I want to be in God's will. And they see these things that they have to change. And they're too afraid to trust God and to adjust their life to follow God's will. Been there, done that. Have the t-shirt. Yep, yep, yep. But we need to adjust our life to God's will, right? In, in Isaiah, I love, this, I love this passage of Scripture. In Isaiah 64, 8, it says, And yet, O Lord, 
You are our Father. We are the clay. You are the potter. We all are formed by your hand. What are we? We are the clay. Who is God? He is the potter. He is the creator of all things. And he wants to mold us. He wants to form us into the best person and have the best life that is possible only if we will let him, right? He doesn't force us. He gives us the opportunity to come to him and have a relationship with Jesus. And he wants to mold us and and form us into this beautiful thing, this beautiful person. He wants us to have the best life possible, an abundant life, right? And he wants us to be able to see what he is doing and join him in that so that he can form us and mold us into his will. All right? God has created each of us, and he wants to mold us. So, here is what I want us to do for the next seven weeks. All right? I will give you a challenge each and every week, just like I always do. But I want to, I want to give you this challenge this week and for this series. All right? So, my Experiencing God Commitments. All right? The first one this week is to memorize what scripture? See, you're already almost there. Good job. Memorize John 15, 5. The next one is, I want you to commit to to knowing God and doing God's will this summer. I want you to commit to being able to open up that vision of, okay, God, instead of saying, God, what is your will for my life? I want you to be able to open up that vision and say, God, what is your will? And recognize what God is doing around us so that we can see the invitation that he has for us to be in his will. So that's the next commitment. And the, and the final one I, I want to challenge you with is attend Experiencing God teaching series as much as possible this summer, because I think it's going to be a powerful thing that we are all going to grow, and we are going to see God's will, and we are going to make a huge impact here in Prineville. Amen? I am excited about this series, and I hope that you are too, and I want you to be here and hear what God has to say each and every Sunday, whether it's here in person or here online. And if you miss a Sunday, you know what? We have it on YouTube. So keep up with it and experience God this summer. I am so excited that you guys are here and and starting out on this journey with me to see what God's will is. Will you pray with me? Father God, I thank you for this time we've come together, Lord. And as we get into this teaching series, Lord, I am so excited about the people that are here in person, the people that are online, Lord. I just pray that you will will help them experience you this summer. Father, I pray that we can ask the right questions and we can see where you are working and be able to join you in your will here in Prineville. Father, help us to open our eyes to you and recognize where you were working, Lord. Father, I just pray that you um, continue to work in our lives and, and help us to see you each and every day. In Jesus' name, amen.